Welcome to How's Your E-Presence on Business Radio X. This show is produced by E-Presence and I am Mark Galvin, the founder and president of that firm. We're coming to you live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel and it is raining cats and dogs out there right now, but we're happy to be in here in this dry, wonderful studio. We want you. We want to welcome you to the show where we talk about business and social media. Thanks for being here. So this show is brought to you by the social media firm ePresence, and I am Mark Galvin. We are thrilled you're here. We are a company that manages social media for both companies and individuals. So because we do all this great work and we focus a lot on social, one of the things that we know is important in the social media world today is LinkedIn because... There are a lot of people out there looking for work or maybe furloughed or worried about where they're going. Or you're a salesperson and you know there's more people online today because they're not in their offices. How are you going to reach them? How can you optimize your social media presence on LinkedIn to make sure you're reaching more people? Here's something I think is really fascinating. To get a better ROI on LinkedIn, you got to remember the average user is on that platform at most of the time per month 17 minutes. I think that number's gone up during the during this uh, coronavirus period, but you've got a very short time to make a first impression. How are you going to do that? Join us on our webinar. We ha- we put together webinars once a week and it's a 1-hour webinar. We have only 10 people on those, and here's the deal. They're only 37.50 a seat. So for $37.50 which is half price during the current crisis, you can get in there and get direct feedback on your profile because everybody's profile ends up on the screen. If you don't like it, you don't think it's good, you don't think it was worth $37.50, you tell me I'll refund your money and pay you $10 for your time. I know you'll find it worthwhile. How do you find it? Go to e-pr.me slash discount or just go to our website. So epresence.me Look for us on the on the menu there, and you'll find the show or the discount for that show. So glad you're here. What are we going to talk about in today's show? We're going to talk about LinkedIn has a new has some upgrades on their ad features, their ad platform. So we're going to talk about that. So you want to stick around for for that fun piece because I'm going to teach you guys something brand new that you'll find very interesting about how LinkedIn is making it easier for to reach their audiences. But before I do that, I want to introduce our guest. I am so excited to share. Our guest today is Ralph Amos with Code Conspirators. Actually, it's Amos, not Amos. I don't know where Amos came from. Ralph, how are you? I'm great, man. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad you're here. Did you notice that right as I started to introduce you, there was a clap of thunder outside? Yep. The gods. I am a little I'm a little nervous. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get on my knees here mm-hmm. for the rest of the show. Well. <laughs> he's speechless. He's got nothing to say. Just, Ralph, who are you and what company do you work with? I work for Co Conspirators. I'm a strategist, marketing strategist over there. So, what does that mean? I help people figure out how to close the gap between the amount of sales that they are currently bringing in and the amount of sales that they want to bring in. And I help them do that through digital means, mostly Google. Rock on. So, Code Conspirators is a digital marketing firm. You guys are top shelf digital marketing firms, and you work with the, you know, I would put you guys on the high end of, of, of social media. If you want someone, excuse me, on, on uh, digital marketing, if you're someone out there looking for someone or an organization that can really kick your website into high gear, Code Conspirators is a great organization. I have invited Ralph here today because I've talked to him a lot. He has great insight on how to make digital marketing work a little better. So I wanted you here today to do that. But before I get into to really drilling in and, and putting the, you know, the screws on you, I want to mm-hmm. talk about some news. Are you cool with that? Go ahead. Well, let's do this. So we talked a little bit about this before the show. LinkedIn has upgraded some of the advertising components on their site. And I want to highlight these because folks, I'm going to tell you what, LinkedIn is getting better at better. Uh, it's a better and better spot to advertise. And here's why. Here's something's really interesting. 80% of organizations that are using social media to increase their returns find that eight out of 10 leads come out of LinkedIn. So everybody out there that's advertising on social, they find eight of their leads 
Eighty percent of their leads are coming from LinkedIn. So very important that you are optimizing that space, especially if you're in a B two B space. So what they've done is they've rolled out a new campaign manager. This is called you know this is where you get the objective based advertising. What you do here is you can create campaigns based on your own goals. Focus on those aspects that you want to boost in your online campaign. Some, for example, brand awareness, conversions, user engagement, lead generation, website conversions are all these options. So if you're interested in any of those, LinkedIn shows you, asks you, what is your objective? You pick one of those options and they'll help you drive that. This is a great thing because not everybody has the experience that you have, Ralph, on digital advertising. Right, mm -hmm. Ralph is you know nodding. He's he's yes. Yeah, I got to get him to talk versus just shake his head. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you, but you are the expert. You understand that you can tease out the the digital side of of advertising. But this is helping people more. The pedestrians focus on all right. I'm going to advertise on LinkedIn. What do I want to do? They're they're teasing out those mm -hmm. objectives. You ask these questions when you meet with someone. What do you why why do you want to advertise? What is your what's the end game or what would you call it? It would be the um, uh, the the action you want them to take, the call to action, the CTA. Right. You're trying to f you tease all that out. LinkedIn's doing a better job of asking those questions. So if you're a little nervous about advertising on on uh, LinkedIn, this will make it easier for you. Here's something else they're doing. They are rolling out a new format for in mail conversion ads. This is awesome. LinkedIn conversion ads are another uh, this no, another new feature, and what it does is it helps you interact with your prospects more privately. So, here's the deal: you can send multiple call to actions to your target audience, which then you can improve target rates because it sends these messages only when your target customer is live on LinkedIn. So they're sitting there online. You're, you know, Ralph, you're on, you jump mm -hmm. on the LinkedIn, you're in my target audience. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get that message like, boom, as if I was sitting there, happened to notice that you were online. Hey, Ralph, I'd like to sell you the newest current, the, the, I'm going to sell you ties because I know you love ties, mm -hmm. right? And so I've got a tie for you to, right. to buy. You're going to get that while you pop online. Now, I'm not online right then and there, but if I'm watching my responses, I can see you send me a message. That's pretty darn cool. I love yes, that. Yes, it is. So it's working for you even if you're asleep. That's, you know, sleeping is a good thing. Yes. And and I think that if you can sleep and wait for that noise, the little ping that yep. somebody's responding, I love that's it. good ad. That's good ad work. Yep. We You need to implement that. You can sleep and we'll do the marketing. We're going to do you. the work. Yeah, you I, wake up with leads to call. It's the best thing ever. I love that. Yep. So the last thing that's coming out that's actually two more things. Company targeting options are this is really great. You can target companies from certain categories that LinkedIn has created for you. So for example, Forbes World's Forbes World's most inventive companies or Fortune's 100 fastest growth companies or Fortune the Fortune 500 or LinkedIn news editors, top companies. You can see what they're doing. They're developing these lists. If you want to target those organizations, you can do that now through LinkedIn. So they're doing all the work. They're, you know, there's a lot of that, that comes with that. Now you and I both know that if I'm targeting the Fortune 500, they're probably getting a, an inordinate number yeah. of leads, of people, not leads, of people are targeting them. Right. So you need to nuance that and be careful with how you're leveraging it. What I would encourage you to do if you're targeting a fortune, the Fortune 500, make it more general, but you need to have one or two in there and target specific people mm. that are in the buying audience. But all those things, what here's the deal. It's making it easier for someone to drive this on their own. Mm. The last is company growth rate. You can target a company based on their growth. You can even target a company if they're negative growth. You may have a product that helps people grow their organization so you may be interested in a company that is negative data or negative growth how do they know this at linkedin it doesn't say that but linkedin is collecting the data they are going to serve those folks up for you so it's almost like getting at your own hmm. research marketing team behind you so that's cool i love it good stuff there so take a look at that if you haven't started advertising on linkedin it is a great thing to do if you are confused about how to advertise on LinkedIn, we at ePresence can help you with that. All right. So if you would like to send me a message and, and 
I, we bring this up on all the shows. If you would like to DM me a, uni, a, a message or a question that you would like for me to answer in live in the show, simply this. Plug in hashtag listener question, hashtag listener question, and send it to my handle anywhere on any social media, E presence MG. That's E presence M for Mark, G for Galvin. The reason is I've had questions that have come up and I just answer them and I don't realize that they're coming in for the show. So if you'd mm. like for me to answer on the show, plug in hashtag listener question and I will answer your question live. I'm going to do that right now. Do that right now. Hey, mm. Your phone should be off though for it's the show. on so, airplane wait. right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get into some fun stuff here. I meet people all the time that tell me that digital marketing is a waste of money. Mm. Why do people say that? They've had a bad experience. Somebody came by, signed them up into a long contract. They didn't have really clear uh, performance, key performance indicators lined up. So they were paying money and they really didn't know what they were getting for it. Is there a... Is it is it oftentimes execution? Because I can hire a company. There's a lot of companies out there that can run digital marketing. And digital mm -hmm. marketing is this, this huge umbrella. Right. And there's columns of service under digital marketing. Is a website considered digital marketing? It's it's the foundation. It is. Is it the start, would you say? Uh, absolutely. So if you don't have a digital footprint at all, we're going to start with the website. But companies have websites. So they come in and they say, great, I got a website I am interested in, in a budget of $5,000 a month for digital marketing. Mm -hmm. What would you say, that company, what would you tell them that they should do first with that budget? Uh, first of all, um, set clear goals for yourself. Like, what do you want to accomplish with this $5,000 a month? How many leads do you need? What are the best kind of leads? Uh, what are the leads that you really don't want? You just want to focus that on the higher end type of client that you're looking for. Good. Um, the next thing I would typically do is make sure Google knows that you're here. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Why would Google not know I'm here? Well, unless you tell Google you're a new website and you do not allow them to crawl your website, they do not know probably about half of the websites out there. They don't even know they exist. That's interesting. So just by putting my website up doesn't automatically mean that Google's going to nope. list me. So if I don't know that, I don't know how to, I didn't know that, what would you tell me to do first? And, and let's say you're, you and I are having a cup of coffee mm -hmm. now. You know, Galvin, you got to make sure you do this to get your website found by Google. What, right. What do you have to do? The easiest thing to do is uh, most people have some kind of Gmail address. You just Google, Google uh, Search Console and sign up for that, and you can get, it's pretty easy to just copy a little piece of code onto your website. And then that tells Google that you're here. It, it allows them to crawl your site and give you feedback on what's holding you back from being having the best presence online. So cool. that's kind of the step one. I remember when I started with ePresence, when we did the same thing, they sent me a postcard in the mail to verify that I was legitimate. I thought that was really interesting. Right. That's a separate thing, which is number the number two thing that I recommend. It's called a Google My Business listing. Right. And that tells them, number one, that you have a local business, and it has uh, it's able to have a lot of information about your business. So that's really good for people who want to show up locally for something, like on the maps. Yep. And you're right. They send you a postcard that, and then there's a little code on there, and you go to the back to your Google My Business listing, type the code in, and then all of a sudden you're verified with Google, and that's probably the second best thing that you can do for yourself because you'll start to show up on the maps for those searches. Right. Yeah. It, they want to make sure that you're legitimately right. at that address. This is something I think is very fascinating when you go to Google Maps. And if you search for a, uh, let's say, a, a provider like Plumbers, mm -hmm. th Plumbers have figured out how they can show up on a map, even though they're not physically in that location. Mm -hmm. and this is a way that Google can combat that. Yes. They verify that that address is there. So, I great. I, I got my website. I've, I'm on Google. And, and I say, all right, we've spent 1000 bucks. let's just say. I got $4,000 left. Mm -hmm. I want to spend this monthly in advertising. How do I... Make sure that, and I'm worried because I've had really bad experiences with mm -hmm. digital marketing. How do I know that that four thousand dollars is going to produce something worthwhile? What is it that I need to look for? Um, well, what I what I typically do is before I take anybody's money, 
I do a little bit of keyword research on the things that they're doing. So if they're plumber Marietta, I want to go and look at and see what the cost for the average keyword is in that area. Say it's 15 bucks, say it's 20 bucks. Keywords. Let's talk about yep. keywords. How do I find out? Do I have to give you my keywords? No, there's you can go to Google um, AdWords or there's different places where you can go and figure where it will tell you like average cost per keyword, search now, volume. I've seen this on your computer. Mm -hmm. I've looked over your shoulder before. You pay a service to give you a deeper dive. I do. So there are services out there that a lot of the, like you guys, as, as a digital marketing firm, you subscribe to it that lets you see a lot more information. Mm -hmm. And that information shares with you, so let's, let's deal with the Marietta deal and the plumber and mm -hmm. Marietta, blah, blah, blah. It, they'll tell you plumber, Marietta, Marietta plumbers, what those numbers, what they're worth, mm -hmm. and how often people will click it, what the audience is, all that data. You find that some of these are getting how many clicks a month? You've seen thousands, some, some thousands, thousands. thousands. And thousands. Yeah. So if I'm in Marietta and I type in plumbers in Marietta, yep. I could pay a fee and, and it maybe it's a per click basis mm -hmm. of fifty bucks. Fifty bucks for that click. Could be. And that click is going to take me somewhere. Where does that go? When well I click that? great question because usually it goes to their website. That's great. It not always great. <laughs> no, it depends on oh, what I'm the. I'm getting to the website. That's it gotta depends be great. on what the website looks like when you get there. Okay, I will tell you that seventy percent of the websites I look at doesn't have it doesn't have the phone number on the top no, of the page. Come on. Yep, just start looking. It'll be at the bottom of the page. It'll be at the contact page. So, what do they do? How do those organizations plan on converting business from their website? Or are they thinking that they're actually going to convert business from their website? They think that they will. They okay. just think that someone's going to get there. It's kind of like it's kind of like these days if you call a business and they don't answer the phone, they assume that you're going to leave a voicemail, which almost no one's going to leave a voicemail. They're just going to call the next person. That's right. Yep. All right. So they go to the website and I can't figure out what to do. I'm probably going to bug out. So I'm you're going to pay that company's going to pay 50 bucks 50 on bucks. that click. Right. And the person lands on the website, and they're well, essentially they got lost in the website. And what do they do? They went back to Google, and went to the next click, or yep. maybe it just shows up as search results. And they're just and the it other just, company that got the business didn't have to pay for a click. Right. I love to equate this to, um, and I've, I've give, used this example with you of you're walking down Main Street, and somebody's out front of a of a little store, and they're mm -hmm. giving away free chocolate samples right <laughs> right and you say hey would you like a chocolate sample and you know and i love chocolate so i'm going to take that chocolate sample and i and i tell them that is great they let me know we'll go inside and get a chocolate sample and i walk in two steps into the store and i look around and i don't know where the heck to find the chocolate mm -hmm. sample it's not it, it's nowhere easily found maybe i'll look around a little bit and i forget it and i walk back out right should be at the front door right it ought to be, well, not only should it be at the front door, but there ought to be a person there that says, hey, are you here for a chocolate mm -hmm. sample? Let me get the, you know, here right. it is. That's what's happening with a lot of these 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 organizations. They're buying clicks, and, and let's be honest, there are some digital marketers that are taking money and saying, great, we're going to drive people to the website, and they don't <laughs> touch the website. Right. They get the click, they land on the website, and, and then the audience doesn't know what to do. How do you solve that? That is one of my favorite questions. And that's why people are unhappy with their and have had poor digital marketing experiences. They'll get a report that says, you got this many impressions, you got this many clicks this month. And you're like, okay, but I don't know how many customers I got. Right. right. So it's really hard for them to write the check the next month because they don't know if they got anything or not. Mm -hmm. So the way that I combat that, this is not something I invented, but uh, I create landing pages that are specific to the ad. So what I want to happen, did you this, have a question? This is, the, this is the person standing inside the store that says, are you looking for chocolate? Right. I want to give them, I want to put them directly in, in front of the chocolate. So, yep. so what I do is I create the ad. Um, when that ad shows up in a search, they read the ad. If they don't click it, it doesn't cost them anything. If, they, if there is a good call to action there and they go, I need this particular service in this market, boom. They click it. It does not go to their website. It goes to a landing page that could look like their website, right. but it is designed to do one thing, convert. 
Mm-hmm. So I most of the people that I deal with, they want the phone to ring. So I put the phone number there, call now, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes I'll put another call to action button there that says schedule an appointment or get a quote or something like that. I usually don't do more than two calls to action on that sure. page. I don't put social media buttons on there. Sorry. I don't want them to go and read about this person's LinkedIn. I want them to call because they right. want that service at that moment. Good. And then you can always fill them in on other things once you get them on the phone. But the whole idea is to get that person to take action. And that's why I create those landing pages. And this is brilliant. So the landing page is there. But you can also use the landing page for social media. Absolutely. So you've got an ad that's rolling out on LinkedIn, like we talked about before. You've got a call to action. You've a, on these B2B clients, they are looking for, you know, a lot of them are getting $5,000 plus per client. Mm-hmm. So they may be willing to pay $150 a click. Sure. And then when they click comes in, they land on from, and, and you want a different landing page for each Everything. ad, right? Yes. Why is that important? Well, then you can know exactly if the budget is different for each landing page Mm -hmm. so you'll know specifically how many people went to that page and how many people took action so if you're doing if you're an electrician and you also have uh, other services that you're providing you create a page for each service that you're trying and then each service has its own budget so at the end of the month you can look and see how many actions were taken on each page and then you can make an intelligent decision right. whether it's working or not working. I might want to reallocate. Well, and then lastly, the thing we didn't talk about is each landing page has its own tracking phone number. So that's something, these tracking numbers are dirt cheap. And what happens is that number is only in one place in the universe. So if that call comes into that number, you know it came from that marketing and that page. That's awesome. Those calls are recorded. So if people are answering your phone and maybe they're not the best at answering the phone, you can figure that out. What I find mostly is they're just simply not answering the phone when it rings and they're going, my marketing's not working. It's like, well, you got 10 calls last month. You didn't answer eight of them. Mm. So call tracking is also very important to, to know whether it's working or not working. Okay. I don't have anybody to answer the phone. Right. Can you help me with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you have a service that'll help oh, answer yes. that phone for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. And that way, there's a person on the other end of the line, they're answering the phone, they're courteous, they're smart, they're representing right. me or my organization, and they can say, great, we're going to have somebody get back to you in 20 minutes or in an hour Exactly. Or That's all they want to know is somebody's going to call them back. Right. But people online are not going to wait two days for somebody to get back. You have no. to get back to them pretty ASAP. quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when I started my company, I was looking for a phone service, mm-hmm. uh, a VoIP system for right. the office. And I made a couple of calls. I'll, the, the company I went with called me immediately. I, in fact, it was on the website. I'd never called anybody. It just occurred to me. I went on the website, and I went through, and I said, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. I think I did it for five different companies. The company that called me first, which was within minutes, mm-hmm. they got my business. Yep. So you've got to make sure you jump on that. The sense of urgency has got to be through the roof if you want to make money. Right. If you want to make money. If you don't want to make money and you want to waste your money, that's cool. Yep. Well, this is good stuff. What else is there on that digital, on, on when it comes to, I ain't making any money on my on my mm-hmm. digital marketing. Is there anything else in there that we should tease out before I hit you with the next question? Um, well, we talked about call tracking. We talked about uh, those forms that are on the tracking, pa- you know, landing pages, making sure you respond quickly to those as well. Wow. Like, it'll yeah. come to your email box, so it's just you want to make sure that you respond quickly to those request for quotes more information stuff like that response time is just super important so what if i am what if i'm of the belief that i'm not going to convert that first click do you have a plan for someone who says i'm it's going to take me two or three interactions before i get somebody to buy how do you combat that all right so i know this just if you google you know how the stats for how best camp best campaign practices Typically, for about 100 clicks, you're going to get three to six actions. So three to six leads for every 100 clicks. Okay. So everyone is not necessarily a potential customer. Some of them are looking for information. Some. So anyway, so what the way that I do it is I go, look, okay, if I send you five opportunities, how many of those are going to turn into quotes, customers? Well, no one is going to say zero, right? Right. We all think we're pretty decent at selling our product. So 
let's just say worst case scenario they close one as long as that one is is worth more than what those clicks cost it's a good deal so mm -hmm. i typically like to say in the beginning for every dollar you spend on marketing you're going to get four back right now i have people that are getting 18 dollars back per dollar but it starts out and you want to get two three four times the investment the longer the campaigns run the lower your cost per lead will get because you start to really refine that. It becomes, instead of the shotgun, it's like a bullet. It's like a laser. Gotcha. But it takes time to do it. So the other thing that you'll run across is people going, well, my marketing didn't work. It's like, okay, well, how much were you spending and how long did you let it run? It's like, well, I let it run for a couple of weeks and I spent $100. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, in order to really get the, to get the data, you need to let this thing run like three months. Okay. And you need to let it, you need to spend at least 500 to a thousand dollars a month, you know, Got now it. this works best for clients that have an average customer worth or average transaction of 500 bucks or more. It's real easy to get return when it's like that. If their average return is 20 bucks, it's going to be real hard to get that return. Right. But for most B2B or service related businesses, it's super easy to do. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So spending a hundred bucks isn't going to really do any good. So mm -hmm. if I'm telling you, I don't see any result in digital marketing, but I only spent a hundred bucks. That's the first trigger. Yeah. Well, you only spent a hundred dollars and you got to do it longer. So three months is the is really the pilot I, I really i won't take your money if you can't do it for at least three months it. it's okay, kind of like good. if you're gonna you know get if you're gonna run a marathon you've got to go farther than to the mailbox every day to get ready you have to you have to put the time in and let the data and then learn from the data awesome so we haven't talked about uh social media mm -hmm. much how does social media complement these efforts? Well, it becomes like one plus one equals three. By doing these things, um, you're giving yourself more opportunities. So think back to 70s and 80s. There was TV. I, I, I know I know you're probably too, too young for that. <laughs> but think about like when your parents were, you know, what did your parents do? They picked up the Yellow Page book. A TV, radio, magazine, billboard, that was about it, right? right, right. So now there's about 5,000 different ways. It's completely fragmented, and you're, it's really going to be hard unless you're kind of everywhere where people are looking. So it's going to be super important. Uh, if you're B2B, you got to have LinkedIn. There's no, there's not an option. Absolutely sure. If you're B to C, um, you got to have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. If you're doing cosmetic anything, you're gonna have to have an Instagram page. If you're, right. you know, so you have to be really smart about, and you know, about where you put yourself. But, but I know this: if I'm looking for a service and you do not show up, you don't even get a chance, right, to be to get my business. Yeah, there's a lot of folks that are searching on social for some sort of validation that an organization's legitimate, even. Yeah. So you, to me, you've got to have your stake in the sand at yeah. least on each of those platforms. Well, the first thing I do when I'm going to meet with somebody is look them up on LinkedIn. Right. That's the first thing I do. Absolutely. You know, and that is where that is what makes someone legitimate. It's like I want to see their picture. I want to see their their job. That is the first thing I do. And if they don't have that, I'm going they're either like way behind in the times or they're not legit. Is it important that these folks are interacting with their audience on social? Absolutely, yeah, because if they're, like, if I go to their page and they're saying negative comment there and they haven't responded to that, that's like not returning a call or not, to, they're not going to take care of me if they're not taking care of people right, that are on right. their page. Right. You know? So the engagement's a big deal. It's a big deal because if they're not taking the time to look at what people are writing about them, I mean, you have your reputation and that's, you know, that's what you stand on. That's so it's a big deal. Yeah. Sure. This is interesting to me because the, there's not a real tracking number. I can't put a specific ROI on engaging with somebody who's complaining on social, right? No. Can you? Yeah. You're rolling your, you're looking at, I mean, you're, you're studying this, the, the, that, God thing, right. thing that happened at the beginning of the show where you were struck by lightning. That's you, not coming back to you. You it? have to get some <laughs> sort of ping or something that someone's written. You have to have some color of, you know, um, you know, we all have like my, my phone vibrates. It says I've got a comment on this page. I have to, I look at that comment immediately right. because it could be, you know, hopefully it's something positive, but you know, people, if they've got something negative to say, usually the first they're thing they're going to do is they're going to go and say it to everyone. So, they know. If I can't track it, why should I do it? 
Well, you can track it by when you get the notification. I mean, you can absolutely track yeah. that. You know how many, you know if you get a, a comment. So you can totally track that yourself. It's more of a manual thing, but you're not getting 100 of those a day. You might get one or two a week. Sure. Or none per week, but... Well, I'm thinking of the ROI piece. If I'm going to put somebody on that and I'm going to, maybe I hire someone to do that for me, how do I know that that person is, that that is worth my money? And and it is, and it's one of those things that's interesting about marketing. This is more like the billboard mm-hmm. marketing. Right. And you've got to be in these spaces to make sure that the audience that is not going to click but they'll see you. It is more about brand awareness mm-hmm. oftentimes. And let's be honest, if somebody's going to follow your company, they're interacting with your content, then you need to make sure you're communicating with them because that does yield sales and it could be referrals, it could be other things. So building that platform and, and you will find if you start asking your clients that there is people that are influenced because mm-hmm. 93% of my decisions are influenced by social media. Absolutely. So that's why it's important. you got to make sure you're influencing your audience. And even though you can't necessarily track that dollar came from that post that came up five months ago, mm. it's still part of the influence package where people are. Totally. I love the ad on on social because then you can't track it. You as, can. As soon as you, yeah, as soon as it's clicked, goes to the landing page, I can see it actually in the mm-hmm. social media world will tell you that there is a, uh, a specific click that happened with that post. Here's something else is I can see engagement. You, mm-hmm. can, you can track your engagement. Although, can I connect engagement to dollars? I tell people, look at your year over year increase in revenues and how much more, how much faster are you seeing your revenues increase once you're on social mm-hmm. than before. Right. And that is a great connection. And we get a lot of that when we yeah. have folks say, Why, you know, give me some idea of how this pays off. Let me tell you about my clients that have been able to see a year over year increase. Right. It is all important. And I think it's all part of a broader package. There is not a, you can definitely, and give me your opinion about this. Is the shotgun approach the only way to uh, run with digital marketing, so I'm going to do one ad on Google and run landing pages. Is that a good approach, or is it better to say, let's let's put this content on social, let's put this content on Google, let's put it on Google Maps, YouTube, blah blah blah, YouTube, mm-hmm. absolutely. Is that a better plan than oh, yes. just doing the website? Well, you got to think spokes on a wheel, right? You got to think. Oh, I love that. There's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of spokes on the wheel to keep the wheel rolling. You can't just have one thing. You got to have a lot of things. That's the media is so fragmented now, and that's you pretty much have to be where your audience is. Well, this is good stuff, and and I love sitting down and talk to you because you are a wealth of knowledge. But we have officially run out of time. <laughs> we would continue with this, and there's so many other topics. If someone wants more information from you, where can they find you and the company? They can find us on LinkedIn. <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> uh, coconspirators.com. Uh, I'm Ralph. Dot, I'm Ralph. Dot Amos, uh, A-M-O-S, at coconspirators.com. You can totally find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can also find me on Roswell Road. I'm over in Sandy Springs. So All right. Smoke signals, whatever you got. You know. <laughs> um, but LinkedIn. As long as I can track that. Smoke and I'm signal. guessing this when this thing gets posted, there'll be some contact information. If yes. Want to get well, that's a very good point. Um, so we'll take all of your contact information. We'll put it in the show mm-hmm. notes so people will know how yeah, to find. I you. love what I do. It's so fun to watch these businesses grow from small goals to to making their dreams happen. Outstanding. Yep. Well, I love it. Well, Ralph, thanks for being here today. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate it. it. And for the rest of you, thanks for joining us here on How's Your ePresence. If you're curious about our company ePresence, here's what we do: we manage personal, company, and collegiate social media. So that means that we can clean up the solopreneur or the CEO's personal social media, or maybe the entire C-suite. Think about that. Your entire C-suite is influencing people all day long. What does their social media look like? Second, we can drive the company social media account so that you are, like we talked about before, that you're approaching your social media or digital media with more of that shotgun effect. Finally, we help college students set up their professional social media. Why? They're really good at checking out TikTok and Snapchat, 
How do they translate that into LinkedIn? Yes, they'll get some of the training at college, but I'm telling you what, here's what we found. Uh, they need to understand this from a professional's perspective, and we help them with that. Finally, we offer webinars. We talked about the webinar earlier and consulting. So if you'd like for somebody to come in and give you some feedback on how you can do social media better, let us know. If you're interested in any of our offerings, as a How's Your E-Presence listener, you automatically get a 5% discount on our services. You can grab that discount by clicking epresence.me slash how's your epresence. So epresence.me slash how's your epresence will get you to the page, the landing page, that'll get you that discount. And our phone number's on there too. You can give us a buzz and just mention how's your epresence. Um, now, uh, how's your e-presence? The show is everywhere. You can catch us live on YouTube and Facebook. You can please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That lets you know when we go live on YouTube. This helps us out more than you know, and it lets you know when there's new content being dropped. Plus, as podcast listeners, we'll drop the shows there, and we're everywhere. iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, even on your Amazon Echo. Uh, we add content every week so you can stay up to date on all things business and social media. So please be sure to add us to your podcast app or go to our website, epresence.me, to catch all of our shows. This show was produced by ePresence. Our director is Eric Welch. The show was promoted by Amanda Perch and produced by Mike Salmon. Until next time, for my guest, Ralph Amos, I'm Mark Galvin, and this has been How's Your ePresence on Business Radio X.